In the quiet town of Casper, Wyoming, three friends, Ethan, Lisa, and Max, found themselves with nothing to do on a warm summer night. They had already watched a couple of movies, played some video games, and even tried a new coffee place that had just opened up. Still, boredom gnawed at them. Hey, have you guys heard of Randonautica? Ethan asked, his eyes lighting up with excitement as he scrolled through his phone. Isn't that the app that gives you random coordinates to explore? Lisa replied, curious. Yeah. You set an intention, and it supposedly takes you to a place related to that. People find all sorts of weird and creepy stuff, Ethan explained. Max shrugged. Why not? Let's do it. We've got nothing better to do. With that, they downloaded the app, set their intention for something interesting, and waited as the app generated coordinates. Their first destination was a park on the other side of town. They piled into Ethan's old car and drove off, hoping for an adventure. The park was eerily quiet when they arrived, but after searching for a while, they found nothing unusual. Just a few stray cats and some discarded beer cans. Feeling a bit let down, they tried again, setting their intention for something spooky. The next set of coordinates led them to an old, abandoned warehouse. They tiptoed inside, the beams of their flashlights cutting through the darkness. But again, they found nothing more than graffiti and broken windows. By 2 a.m., the thrill of the adventure was wearing off. Ethan suggested they give it one last try before calling it a night. They set their intention for something truly exciting and hit the generate button. The app provided coordinates to a field just south of town. This better be good, Max muttered as they climbed back into the car. The drive to the field was uneventful, but the mood in the car was tense. The road was deserted, and the only sound was the hum of the engine. They parked at the edge of the field and stepped out into the cool night air. According to the app, we need to walk about a mile that way, Ethan said, pointing into the darkness. With only their flashlights to guide them, they began the trek across the field. The tall grass rustled around them, and the stars provided a dim, distant light. After what felt like an eternity, they finally reached the coordinates. At first, they saw nothing out of the ordinary. Just an open field, as quiet and empty as the rest of their night had been. But as they scanned the area with their flashlights, Max noticed something moving in the distance. Do you guys see that? He whispered, pointing towards two figures crouched by the ground. They moved closer, their curiosity getting the better of them. When they were about 50 feet away, the light from their flashlights caught the figures off guard. The two men turned to face them, their eyes wide with shock and anger. Ethan, Lisa, and Max froze in their tracks. The men were standing over a freshly dug hole, and beside them were the lifeless bodies of a family of four, two adults, and two children. Oh my God, Lisa gasped, her hand flying to her mouth. The menacing confrontation. One of the men, a burly figure with a scar across his face, stepped forward. What the hell are you doing here? He growled, his voice low and threatening. We, we were just exploring, Ethan stammered, trying to keep his voice steady. The second man, thinner but just as menacing, pulled a gun from his waistband and pointed it at them. You shouldn't have come here. Now, what are we going to do with you? Fear coursed through the friends as they realized the gravity of their situation. They were miles from their car, in the middle of a dark field, with two men who had just committed murder. We won't tell anyone, Max said quickly. We didn't see anything. We'll just leave, and you'll never hear from us again. The burly man shook his head. It's too late for that. You know too much. Just as the situation seemed hopeless, Lisa noticed a small dip in the ground behind them. She nudged Ethan and Max, giving them a silent signal. On the count of three, they turned and bolted, running as fast as they could towards the dip. Gunshots rang out behind them, but they didn't stop. Adrenaline pumped through their veins, and fear drove them forward. They dove into the dip, which turned out to be a shallow ditch, and pressed themselves flat against the ground. The men shouted and cursed, but after a few minutes, the noise died down. 
The friends lay still, barely daring to breathe, until they were sure the men had given up the chase. The Long Journey Back Crawling out of the ditch, they began the long, terrifying walk back to their car. Every sound in the night seemed amplified, every rustle of grass a potential threat. But they moved as quietly and quickly as they could, driven by the need to get away. When they finally reached the car, they piled in and sped away, not stopping until they were back in the safety of Ethan's house. They sat in silence for a long time, processing the horror of what they had witnessed. We have to report this, Lisa finally said, her voice trembling. Those people, they need justice. Ethan and Max nodded in agreement. The next morning, they went to the police and told them everything. The authorities were skeptical at first, but agreed to investigate the field. The police found the bodies exactly where the friends had described. The news of the gruesome discovery shocked the small town of Casper, and a manhunt was launched to find the killers. Ethan, Lisa, and Max were hailed as heroes for their bravery, but the experience had left them deeply shaken. The friends never used Randonautica again. The app that had promised adventure had delivered a nightmare instead. They tried to return to their normal lives, but the memory of that night haunted them. As for the killers, they were eventually caught and brought to justice. But the friends knew they would never forget the terror of coming face to face with evil in the darkness of that field. The summer nights in Casper were never quite the same for Ethan, Lisa, and Max. The thrill of adventure had been replaced by the stark reality of danger, and they were reminded that sometimes the unknown is better left unexplored.